Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Snehal More. I have enjoyed working with Virat for the last nine years. We will be going over some interesting body cases today. So let's begin. So there are two hyperintense lesions in the right lobe of the liver, one showing fat density and the other fluid density. Again noted are two T2 hyperintense lesions. So my fellowship director always said that a fat density lesion in the liver most likely turns out to be a hemangioma. And that's exactly what happened in this case. The fat density lesion shows restricted diffusion, whereas the cyst does not. And here we see the fat density lesion shows complete filling in of contrast versus the cyst, which shows no enhancement. Next case. Here we see that the abnormality is located in the region of the gallbladder. On the coronal images, we see that the gallbladder is distended. And you see there is torsion of the cystic duct of the gallbladder. So we see that the gallbladder is mildly distended. There's some pedicolcystic fluid, and you see the cystic duct. So again, you see the gallbladder is distended, this particle cystic fluid, and here you see the torsion of the cystic duct. These findings like to represent gallbladder torsion. Gallbladder torsion is a very rare cause of acute abdomen. It is mainly seen in elderly women and occurs in patients with an anatomic variation of gallbladder fixation to the liver. Symptoms are nonspecific and include acute onset of abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. The absence of bile stones in a gallbladder with signs of cholecystitis can suggest a torsion of the gallbladder. Besides an abnormal location of the gallbladder, a swirl sign of the cystic duct can be seen on CT images. The gallbladder will be more distended in torsion than in a normal acute cholecystitis, and treatment of the torsed gallbladder is emergency cholecystectomy. Next case, we see the abnormality in the biliary ducts and the small bowel. There is moderate to severe biliary duct dilatation in the liver. The CBD is dilated. There is severe distension of the small bowel loops. And here we find the reason for the small bowel obstruction. It's a very large gallstone in the distal ileum. So gallstone ileus is a rare cause of obstruction in the elderly population and usually found in old women with multiple comorbidities. The diagnosis is radiologic and it's often late. Therefore, we need to have a high index of suspicion in elderly women with multiple comorbidities. The Riglis triad on plain film shows pneumobilia, signs of small bowel obstruction and ectopic radiopic gallstones. On CT, the diagnostic signs include signs of small bowel obstruction, ectopic gallstone, an abnormal gallbladder either completely filled with air or shows an air fluid level or has fluid accumulation with an irregular wall. Here we see that there's an abnormality in the outer wall of the stomach. So there is a discontinuity in the outer wall of the stomach. There's outpouching of the outer wall and the contents of the stomach have moved into the pouch. Let's scroll to the CT again to see the findings, the defect of the stomach wall, the outpouching and the gastric contents moving into the pouch. 
So the most common reason for gastric perforation is ulcer disease. Perforation uh, of the stomach usually presents as subdermatic free air on the chest x-ray, peritoneal fluid. There's gastric wall thickening. Sometimes there's discontinuity of the gastric wall. And surprisingly, extravasation of oral contrast is not a frequent finding. Next case, here we see there is an abnormality in the lower uterine segment and vagina. Here we see there is dilatation of the vagina with simple fluid. There is dilatation of the lower uterine segment and vagina with fluid. Let's see the case again. We see dilatation of the lower uterine segment and severe dilatation of the vagina with simple fluid. So this was a 13-year-old female with pelvic pain and um, the diagnosis is hydrometrocolpus. So hydrocolpus is dilatation of vagina by serous fluid. Hydrometrocolpus is dilatation of the uterus and vagina. Vaginal obstruction is usually due to atresia or stenosis or imperforate hymen. In neonates, this presents as a pelvic or abdominal mass with or without imperforate anus, esophageal and duodenal atresia, and congenital heart disease. In adolescent girls, this presents as pelvic mass or pain, uh, blood in the vagina due to physiological hormonal stimulation. On MR, the fluid is usually low signal on T1 and high on T2, but if there are hemorrhagic contents, then the fluid is high on T1. And there can be hydronephrosis from ureteral compression in long-standing obstruction. Next case. Here we see the abnormality is in the left hemithorax. There is a defect in the left hemidiaphragm and there is herniation of intraabdominal fat and bowel loops in the left hemithorax. So this is a diaphragmatic hernia. So when we see the case again, we see the bowel loops, the fat, and the defect in the left hemidiaphragm. Diaphragmatic rupture and hernia can be seen in motor vehicle accidents, and the tear tends to cluster about the junction between the central tendon and the muscular portion of the diaphragm. It is usually seen on the left, and the diagnosis is important because if you miss it, there can be delayed visceral herniation with strangulation. And CT with sagittal and coronal reconstructions has a positive and negative predictive value of about 80%. Next case, here we have multiple hypodensities in the liver and sac-like vascular structures within these hypodensities. There are multiple hypodense lesions throughout the liver. There is an aneurysm in the right lobe of the liver and there are deposits in the portal vein. Again, you see presence of several aneurysms in the lesions in the left lobe of the liver. Again, we see multiple hypodense lesions in the liver, the aneurysmal sacs, and severe ascites in the abdomen and pelvis. So this is a case of liver abscesses with mycotic aneurysms. Infection in the liver is usually by five routes. First is biliary due to ascending cholangitis. Portal vein is due to bacteremia from intra-abdominal sepsis. Arterial due to septicemia, local extension from neighboring tissues, and lastly, traumatic due to blunt and penetrating injuries. The CT appearance is round or irregular hypodense masses with peripheral enhancing capsule. 
The mycotic aneurysms are due to infection of the arterial wall by usually by bacteria and the causes hematogenous spread of bacterial infection classically from the heart. They are usually saccular and the aneurysmal sacs are in odd locations. They carry a high risk of mortality rate. Complications include a high risk of rupture, ongoing source of sepsis and embolic infarction. Next case, here we see there's an abnormality involving the left kidney. There is a subcapsular hyperdensity causing mass effect on the kidney. On the coronal images, again, you see the subcapsular collection causing mass effect on the lower pole of the kidney. Let's play the clip again. So you see the left kidney contour has been distorted by this subcapsular collection. So this was a 33-year-old male after fall, and this phenomenon is called as page kidney or page phenomenon, and it refers to systemic hypertension secondary to extrinsic compression of the kidney by a subcapsular collection, usually a hematoma, seroma, or a uranoma. So compression of the kidney leads to compression of the intrarenal vessels, decreasing blood flow to the renal parenchymal tissue and inducing renin secretion. This activation of the renin angiotensin system causes hypertension. This collection is usually subcapsular in location, maintaining a reniform contour. Importantly, however, the adjacent renal parenchyma should be distorted. On ultrasound, you see the resistive inde index is elevated, and on CT, you, you might see a delayed nephrogram on the side of the affected kidney. Next case, here we see the abnormality is in the pelvis. There is a complex cystic mass on the right and complex hypointense fluid in the pelvis. Again, we see the large complex cystic mass on the right and some free intraperitoneal fluid. So this was a 35-year-old female with positive pregnancy test. And although CT and MR are not commonly used in the imaging of patients with a positive pregnancy test, various types of ectopic pregnancy are occasionally imaged with these modalities. And we should always consider ectopic pregnancy in the setting of hemoperitoneum or a pelvic mass in a woman of childbearing age. This case stresses the importance of lab results while evaluating for ectopic pregnancy. The findings of complex free fluid and an absent intrauterine gestational sac requires interpretation in conjunction with the beta HCG level. And if the beta HCG level is greater than 2000, the findings are indicative of a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Next case, here we see a lot of free fluid in the abdomen and pelvis. We can now see the source of the fluid. There's a large defect in the dome of the urinary bladder, and there's free fluid around the bladder and the uterus. Again, we see on coronal images the defect in the bladder dome and lots of free fluid in the abdomen and pelvis. Note that the free fluid is seen around the bowel loops. Let's see the case again. We see the urinary bladder. There is rupture of the bladder dome and all the free fluid in the abdomen and pelvis. So this was a 43-year-old female with fall and abdominal pain. And urinary bladder rupture is usually associated with pelvic fractures. The patients present with gross or microscopic hematuria 
and widening of the pubic symphysis or obturator ring more than one centimeter on the pelvic x-ray should suggest presence of urinary bladder rupture. So there are two types of urinary bladder rupture, the extraperitoneal type, which is the most common and is associated with pelvic fractures or penetrating trauma. The intraperitoneal rupture is usually from traumatic rupture of the bladder dome, which is in this case. And in the intraperitoneal bladder rupture, you see contrast around the bowel loops in between the mesenteric folds. The extraperitoneal bladder rupture, you see collection of contrast in the extraperitoneal space. The extraperitoneal space is between the urinary bladder and pubic symphysis, and it is bounded by the transverse salus fascia, the parietal peritoneum, and it extends from the pelvic diaphragm to the umbilicus. The urinary bladder is located in this space. CD cystography or fluoroscopy shows high density fluid freely flowing in the peritoneal spaces. And localized collection in the retroperitoneum can become intraperitoneal if the anatomic boundaries of the retroperitoneum is disrupted by trauma or prior surgery. We have come to the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.